What up, gamers? Popping in. Much. And non-gamers, we are not denominational here. We well, accept all of gaming variety. Eventually. Gamers first. Um, we do yeah. accept um, all, but we a, are heavily There's a pecking practice. order. Yeah. Gamers yeah. first. <laughs> Intensely. Oh, my God. That's, That's a, the name of the new product. Gamers sounds, first. That sounds fast. like every terrible slogan we've, yeah. we've heard from every single Venn or Quibi or whatever else. Oh, hell yeah. Man. I'm surprised that the Microsoft conference didn't start with, you know what we believe in Microsoft. Gamers first. And then the, the crowd's <laughs> for applause. Yeah. <laughs> gamers! That's me he's talking about. That's me. I'm a gamer. <laughs> it's me, me. No, it's, it's funny you bring that up because like uh, then launched today. I'm sure we were all watching the, the gala premiere. Um, I, gifted, I gifted 500 subs to Ven. I didn't. I'm kidding. It's okay, I was. I, I didn't. No, no, no. I didn't do that. That's, I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to say. I didn't want to dogpile on that. I was like, that's an interesting marketing move, trying to steal that Venn no. audience. No, um, no, no. no. <laughs> but uh, on along the line of gamers first, man, I couldn't tell you how many times the verbiage kept hitting. Like we are trying to elevate gaming culture, and it, it's this. It's continuously leaning into this weird persecution or like subverted idea that gamers think they have. While also announcing that they're going to be a cross, cross-cultural cross intersection of all pop culture. So they're leaning into this. Ah, th this is a particular pet peeve of mine. And it specifically has nothing to do with Ven or anyone working on it or any of its content. Just the messaging of like, finally, gaming's time has come. <laughs> and it's been the like top form of media in the world for the past decade. So it's time mm. came and went. And I'm just so annoyed that everyone still feels like it's this niche... A genre filled with these like good, like well-meaning but social outcasts who are just waiting to be accepted by a network. Um, I mean that that happened with G Four. Like acceptance seems to be the only thing that people look back yeah. fondly on is the validation of having gaming content on TV. Um, it's so weird to me. Yeah, it's like what a so what a. I mean, you said something quite controversial. Mm -hmm. It just reminded me. It reminded me of that. Um, what's that show? The newsroom, I think, you know, like that first, like you know, clip that they share all the time of like the main character at like a college, you know, debate and being like, America has fallen, like or you know, America is not the greatest country in the world, but it can be. And then there's like a whole speech about yeah, that's like, the newsroom, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just did the same thing, but with gaming. So <laughs> I'd, I'd ask you to defend that. You said gaming has been great, but it, it's not anymore. What happened, Lawrence? What happened to gaming? I. Uh, okay, bit of a swerve there. I didn't know that gaming wasn't great anymore. Um, you just said so. Yeah, yeah you're so right. Kraken, Kraken thinks that you said that. I don't, I don't. Did I Lawrence heard that. Say that. Did Lawrence say that gaming isn't good anymore? Well, not, not great, but it's like not the best. Like That's it's true. It, you know, it's fallen. Gaming well, has, has fallen. It, has gaming fallen? If I were a YouTuber, um, which actually I guess I am, uh, here's, <laughs> here's how you turn that around. Is basically, um, you... Enough with the hold on, crap. Ah, people are people are at mentioning me. Cool, thanks for that. And it won't go away either. I have to like streamer mode turns itself off, which is a real fun, a real fun thing. Anyway, <laughs> on Discord. Yeah, I Weird. don't know why. Um. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, yeah. So hard. Sorry. Here's here's the YouTuber angle on why gaming used to be good because back in the day, games journalists weren't shills. All right. You went to X Play, <laughs> what? and you got the hey hey I'm Wait the YouTuber minute, here hey okay all right I'm sorry I'm sorry go ahead go ahead X Play go, 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 go. didn't shill like these journalists do now all right <laughs> you want a real review you went to G4 where they would really dice games apart and they weren't afraid to pull any punches or like Game Pro Magazine where the writing was good and well researched now you just have idiot SJW journalists ruining gaming. All right. <laughs> I kind of took it to I kind of took it to an angle there. Maybe I should have left that out, but so that that's how we that's how we make it good again. We bring back G four because it worked the first time. It worked we're already the second doing time. That. No, it we're, worked every time, and it's gonna work already, again. We're bringing oh. back G four. We're doing Ven. We're doing well. There's another one too, isn't there? Another fucking video game network that's coming out soon. That that's some other ridiculous. I was like, what? Why do we need so many of these? Sorry, go ahead, Kraken. I'm just confused why that. I, I'm that's not the direction I expect you to take so gaming oh, is is determined by 
the the media that covers it in terms of like journalists because i i'd never seen that as it's the culture you know, cranking it's the culture. the culture it's gaming culture all right and back okay. in the day back in the day when i was 12 <laughs> and my taste in gaming had never been more accurate and and my consumption of tv media was as cultured and as educated as it ever could be that's when games journalism was good and it's bad now now that i'm an adult uh -huh. I'm going to say something that I say on, I think, literally every podcast, which is nostalgia. Welcome. Nostalgia oh. colors your opinion. Nostalgia colors. Yes. You, you always think that the, the time in your life that was the best was the best time in everybody's lives of all time. 90s, and baby. Out, and it turns out you're wrong. Uh, it's, that's not true. That's but not the what 90s. happened. Bruce, no, not, you're not but the 90s. Not, not, but, Bruce, not but the aughts. Not Bruce, but the 80s. Bruce. <laughs> the nineties though. No. Don't you remember? You're wrong. No. It's just like you wouldn't how get it. Only nineties kids know. Only <laughs> Zoomers think that they're better than millennials. Millennials think they're better than Gen Xers. Gen Xers think they're better than baby boomers. It turns out we've all had our fucking ups and downs. Everybody's had it hard. Everybody's had it easy. So <laughs> just be cool. Everybody. Yeah, but like, we have it especially hard. Uh, why do we have it especially hard? We're in a pandemic. We are in a pandemic, but also we get to do this. All we're, we make a living from our liter from oh, our fucking we, seats. By we, I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about my Who generation. <laughs> I am the voice of my generation. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't clarify that. I'm well, the, the voice of my generation. The generation before the baby boomers, which I don't know the name of, went through the flu pandemic of 1918, and I think somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred million people died. You know that? So wait, what does this have to do with gaming? <laughs> Gaming is the what? nexus, but also we're going to talk about Game of Thrones and Marvel movies and hip hop music and lifting weights, I guess. But gaming, <laughs> lifting you guys. weights. I mean, sorry, there there is a Venn show about lifting weights, I guess. There is. I saw. I saw. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I sorry. I hate. So let me let me. Uh, I guess dismiss any preconceptions. I, I I don't want anything to fail, but I can't. It's like it's really tough for me to hide my bitterness at being involved in and Bruce, man. I, you're, you're probably more here than, well, shouldn't say you're more there than I am, but having seen this exact thing happen in exactly the same way, multiple exactly times in a row. A hundred percent. It's it's really hard for me to to like root for these new ventures with like pure enthusiasm and honest good faith. Um, yeah. I mean, they're out to make money. So that's good that you don't, you know, you don't blindly uh, accept them. Cause I mean, they're out, they're out to make money from you, Lawrence, cause you're a gamer. Um, so am, they, right. they, they want to do that. Um, but at the same time, maybe they will come out with something that is content that you'll watch and you'll like. Uh, and that's, to me, that this is sort of like the, the, was the same thing that I think Lawrence, you and I were saying on Inside Gaming, which was um, with VR. VR needed a killer app. It needed something that made VR uh, good. And um, what the hell? <laughs> and uh, oh my, a phone call. Um, and uh, so VR really doesn't have anything. I mean, even now, Half-Life Alex is probably the closest to a killer app and it still hasn't sold that much for VR. And it's the same with Ven. Ven needs a show that everybody likes. Um, and right now it doesn't have that. Ven has just got a bunch of other, you know, gaming news programs that cool. we all know and we've all seen a hundred times. Now, Bruce, so. now hold on. Now, okay, now hold, right, on right. yeah. hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Um, here's, here's the thing. What do gamers love to do with their computers? Um, 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 porn. <laughs> they do. They love, they love porn. Yeah. That's fair. But, uh, what, okay. What's the second favorite thing that gamers like to do with their gaming um, systems? You know, um, Twitter. Well, you know, you can't really scroll Twitter on X. Wait, can you Is Twitter on Xbox? <laughs> well, okay, let, let's just mm, let's 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 skip the slow so the gaming, all right? But what happens before you hard game? You have to do something to hard that game. game. To, to I, I only soft game. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to get this. Well, then Zen is not I don't, for you. you oh wait, no, it is for us. Actually, sorry, it's it's all pop culture. But you download, right? Okay, so let's have a show called the download because everyone on the internet loves to download things. And and it, now hold on a minute, Bruce. What? I, I didn't have to, have to say the word. Sucking. I, I didn't say a word. Yeah. What? What, what is it? We're Let me stop you right there, Bruce. I, I didn't say nothing. Uh, what if we gave people laptops so they could like scroll through things and put them around a Hold table? On. Lawrence, hold on. Wait, 
What yeah. about this? What about if they, we give people tablets with removable keyboards? That's that's a branding opportunity right there too. Ooh, it that's win-win, you baby. Bet it, you bet it is. That's right. I, yeah, no, I think we, we got ourselves a killer show here. The, like covering the hottest Lawrence news. I, I'm being cynical again. I'm sorry. This is shitty. No, what, what, no, no. What Lawrence is trying to say is we've seen the people sitting around a table with laptop show talking about video games for the last, what? I guess almost 20 years. I think G4 debuted in 2003, something like that. So we've seen that for almost 20 years. And we're not saying that it's bad, but what my, I think what I was going to get to, Lawrence, eventually about Venn and anything else, it's all personality driven. It's not about the sets. Hmm. It's, not, it's not about the quality of the graphics. It's not about what laptop they have. It's about who's on the show. And we all, everybody, everybody here knows that, that watches on Twitch or YouTube or whatever. They all yeah. know. It's all driven by personality and it always will be. So yeah. if they have the right personalities, then they're, that's good. We're good. Good point. Good point. Uh, Boone has an interesting comment. Should they have a phone number to call in? You should take caller's opinion. It's funny you mentioned that. I actually tried to produce a show like that a while ago, and it turns out people hate hearing other people be awkward. They hate it uh, oh, with, a, with a deep, deep passion. So yep. uh, I realize Which is why I'm the least favorite of the tr of the trio on this on this uh, on this podcast. People well, are not, always you're not the oh. least favorite. Oh, I'm getting DMs all the time saying, Kraken, <laughs> what you said DMs. was cringe back there. <laughs> no, DMs. I, yeah, they're they're slipping in there and they're just they're ripping me a new one because whenever I go on these tangents, everyone all they do is plug their ears with their little cotton balls and they wait till I'm done. <laughs> no, how did hey chat? Let's, Get them cotton balls out, please. Give me a chat. shot. Here's here's what I need you to do right now, chat, both in Lawrence's chat and my chat. I need you to tell us who your favorite is on the podcast, say Kraken. Oh, no. Who your favorite is on the podcast, say Kraken. Okay? Yeah, All right. I'm chat. waiting with bated breath. Here, here it comes. I can't I'm wait. looking. We're I'm just looking. gonna see walls of Kraken. Oh no, somebody just wrote Bruce. Uh, mm -hmm. Hold on, ben, uh, Boone. Boone. Okay. St uh, Stephanie. I like Kraken. PETA. Oh. Looks like all of Lawrence chat is saying Lawrence. Oh, Lawrence, they're all like saying that. Lawrence. Uh huh. I've indoctrinated okay. them properly. C guys, you were supposed you to say Kraken. You threw it's me under right. the bus. I'll take the. I'll take the. Uh, you know, the what, what's the honorable mention? I've I've always been an honorable mention, and that's <laughs> no, kind of nice. that's not true. How I, look? At least we're not sitting around a table with laptops, right, Lawrence? Okay, hold on. I've actually never watched you for. I'm, I don't want to out myself. Uh, I, How only, dare you? Look, that it's was my only, livelihood for years. It's only ever been on like in a doctor's office or some shit when I was a How kid. How dare would, like, you? I would like watch it a little bit and I'd be like, oh, they're talking about games. That's fun. Uh, but it was never like where I got my game news because like, no, yeah. you know, I would just get that on the internet. So like, why would I Probably watch? A TV show about games. You were like everybody else. Let me tell you. <laughs> right. um, because nobody watched G4. I saw the ratings every week. Uh, I know. Um, and also, uh, the most important part of what you just said was, yeah, you got your gaming news from the fucking blog or from a video or like something else like that that you would just go on the internet and look up gaming news. And it was we always used to make a joke about the show Cheat on G4. Cheat would give you cheat codes, but through a television show which is the most ridiculous thing. Cause they used to be like, okay, so then all you want to do is here's the code to get invincibility and in yeah, Contra did 3. Did you get all that? <laughs> up, like, up, A, uh, A, B, 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 right, right, right. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, are you supposed to write that down while you're watching television? Like, no, use the fucking internet. So like, we always used to, we always used to make fun of G4's content when we worked at G4 because we knew it was internet content. We knew mm. it was supposed to be on the internet. We knew it did wasn't that, supposed to be on television. Did that ever like, I mean, at what level was that self-aware within within the company or the studio? You know, like. Um, I mean, it was. We were like everybody, you know, from the very, very top, like all the hosts, Kevin and Olivia, all the way down to the producers and stuff. We would all joke about that on te on television. Like that was that was the point. Like we knew this. We were making internet content, but but the internet hadn't quite gotten to that point yet. So G four was sort of in the weird middle ground of like 
television wasn't really right for that stuff, but then also the internet ha- wasn't ripe for it yet. Um, so we did, we did, we all knew, and uh, we still enjoyed what we were producing, and we liked it, but it was but it was wasn't always television content. I don't know. So I have a question for you, Bruce, because I feel like out of all of us, you've you've traveled this path the most, especially yeah. with with Venn launching and G four supposedly coming back sometime, and also X Play and all that. Do you, with with the with YouTube being what it is and games media kind of maturing outside of the TV broadcast system, or even just like the the traditional production system, do you yeah. think what's the path that a more a more like, I guess for lack of a better word, officially produced show or a, a linear TV show, what's the path for that to be relevant now that that we have online media that basically satisfies everyone's desire for gaming content? in exactly the way they want it, exactly when they want it, to exactly the depth that they want it. I mean, the you know, nobody's gonna wanna hear this, especially like, I mean, who knows, like, by the way, guys, we could all end up working with or for Venn. Not for, but with Venn. We could well, be making content for them. I would or, gladly or do it, so yeah, I'm trying to like, yeah, I yeah. sound like too much of an asshole. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, like we all could, or with G4, or with any of these other networks. and. The thing it always boils down to is that it's it's boutique, so you're always speaking specifically to the audience that you want. You're like, yeah, if you want a really broad audience, then you produce something that's for a really broad audience, but you still have to please a really wide swath of, of people. But if you want to make a specific show for a specific group of people, then you could do that. But the problem is that's not what television is. That's what the internet is. That's what YouTube is. That's what Twitch is. You're, you're speaking to, you know, like tiny little groups of people across the internet on Twitch or on YouTube. Like crackhead has got, you know, your 3,000 people that watch your stream. And Lawrence and I have our 400, 500 people that, that are like, we've got these little groups of people. But when you start widening out, then gamers, I, I don't know. I feel like people that play video games, if they're already enthusiasts, they don't like, they don't like uh, seeing their stuff dumbed down. So there's a, there's a very really thin line that you've got to ride um, if you're making something for a really broad audience that are gamers, for lack of a better term. Yeah, I mean, Kraken, do you, what, what about what about you as a as a games media consumer? Um, I, it doesn't sound like you were really hooked on G4 back in the day. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious well, where I'm your just, tastes lie. I'm, I'm curious to see what they're thinking because, you know, if there wasn't really space for them in the market back then, there's definitely not space right now. Like, you know, people don't think of TV as a place to get, like TV's already struggling. So to launch a new media, well, no, that's the wrong word. A a uh, a show focused on new media content on old media is like, just feels like a really big mismatch. So maybe they've got some some plans that I don't know of, but you know, and like a budget and they can do a lot more with it. Like maybe they're trying to be kind of a, you know, year round E3 style thing where they can have rolling announcements and, you know, interviews and insider knowledge and, you know, about from game studios. But like, I just feel like that's not how the games industry works. Like it's not built that way. So it feels kind of forced. So I'm not optimistic, but hey, I'm sure some smart people have to be behind it, so I'm sure they know what they're doing, and uh, I'm hoping to be surprised. There, there are there are some really smart people behind it. Uh, some of the the, the co CEOs, I think one of them's from I think Riot, right, Lawrence? And then yeah, one of them is from um, gosh darn it, they were uh, they they they're like from oh, like uh, oh yeah, BlizzCon, Blizzard Entertainment, like so Blizzard and Riot, and I'm I'm looking at. Uh, a deadline article about it and they're the guys that started it and they've got a round of like 17 million dollars in funding there is no parent company they just got a bunch of investors um and clearly they're looked 17 up to million yeah what would they're, you they're, they're, what would you say the runway on that is like for a for a full production studio paying like stat by the way like a brief aside when it comes into the money part of it i was actually pretty impressed like ven found a way to do social distance production um, their sets, some of the camera angles can look a little a little rough because they have to be six feet apart. And so they have talking head shows where it's like people at the hugest desk in the world so that they can be separated. But yeah. 17 million, I feel like, 
I don't I don't really know the numbers on what it takes to operate a, a whole slate of, of productions like that, but clearly they that buys them some time to get viewership numbers, to get on networks, to get syndicated, to to have other people carry their stuff so they can claim viewership, you know, far beyond what their viewership probably actually is. I'm not I'm not saying Venn specifically. I don't know why I'm holding a ball trimmer. Um, I I just grab things with my hands, I guess. Balls included. Uh, I, I'm not trying to be not trying to imply that there's that's just what production is. That's just the game. Uh, is, is you get the numbers and then you either sell or you sell those numbers to advertisers. Uh, I don't know how long would you say they have and uh, how much time have they bought with 17 million. So I think that right now, till just so you, Lawrence and Craig and you guys will know this. They have a studio in Playa Vista, um, and we all know how much that costs. Yeah, it costs a pretty penny to do that. Um, my guess is just off the 17 million, and that's not like like Lawrence, you were saying they're sponsored by T-Mobile, and I'm sure they've raised additional funds here and there with ad buys and stuff like that. But just the 17 million probably buys them two years. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's probably about two years. Um, maybe, maybe like a year and a half uh, if they're really just throwing money away. But well, I'm gonna go back to what I was saying before. The personalities they have um, well, I'm not saying anything about the personalities because I don't know them, but they're probably not paying them very much. Um, I would I would imagine a lot of that uh, money is going into their ad sales team. It's going into their studios and their sets and their rent and their executive uh, salaries and a lot of other stuff. But the, but the talent themselves, um, while I don't know if they're good or bad, I don't know them. So... I, it's weird. It's weird to me that they don't have an anchor talent. Like there isn't somebody there that they went, they're like, we got Kriken. We got the most well-known person in the gaming industry, the The Kriken. voice of the generation, The Kriken? voice of voice of a generation, Kriken. And we're paying Kriken $1 million a year or whatever to do this. I'll, I'll um, watch that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they didn't do that. Instead, they got a bunch of people that, um, I, who, a few of which I, I know and have met and like I've met and talked to and they're really cool. But I don't, I don't know that they bring with Wait, them. Oh, did they already announce like who their their cast is? Oh, they're already they're broadcasting. They're, oh, they're broadcasting what? now. Yeah, today it started was the G four. Yeah, it started today. I thought no, it was no, like Ben, 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 Ben. Oh, ben, yeah, not, not G four, not G four. Which brief I don't know aside, who ben is. Uh, uh, some people in chat were confused <laughs> about what Ben is, so I apologize. We really didn't establish the conversation. Well. Me. Yeah, it's it's Kriken, the Kriken channel. No, no, I uh, don't know what it is. I'm oh, one of them. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Venn, V-E-N-N, is a is a gaming network, uh, but right out the gate, they're already saying, like, it's gaming, but it's also pop culture and music, and, and so, you know, it's it's everything. They're just, they're, they're launching a new entertainment network, basically, with a variety of shows that are kind of, that are produced over, over the internet, uh, some of them are, and uh, I, again, will try very hard to not be jaded, um, but their, their programming lineup is sort of the whiteboard that I've seen over and over again for the past 15 years. Of It's just kind of all the ideas that seem like good ideas, but then kind of not saying that Ben will run into this, but in the past has certainly borne it out that those ideas rarely pan out into quality content that can pull people away from the content they're already watching, which is, I think, the issue is, is ripping people off the sticky content they're already well into um, of the YouTube channels they watch that, like specifically and hyper serve their specific interests so but yeah it's a type yeah. of diagram that's your i mean that's the branding right is that it's the overlap of gaming and then everything else that we can do ad sales with uh, it's a venn diagram yeah exactly so that that's the setup it launched today uh i was i was actually watching the the premiere just before uh the podcast so that's that's kind of why it's foremost on my mind especially since mm -hmm. uh again speaking purely personally you know that's that's a world that i have stepped away from for the past six months or so so it's just like all this stuff is sort of getting jumbled up in my head again. Uh, seeing seeing somebody else step up to the plate and swing at it. Mm -hmm. I don't it's, know. I, it, oh, uh, go ahead. Sorry. The, well, was, was, they have they have like I, somebody mentioned in chat, uh, and, I, and I'm sure I know why they mentioned it in chat. They have Sasha Gray. Sasha Gray is uh, relatively noticeable. Uh, do you guys know who Sasha Gray is, Crichton and Lawrence? I am aware. Yeah, I shot a video okay, with her. Right. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, did I do that too? I can't remember I, if I did that too. I think I you, may were, have. you were there that day. I don't know if you actually were on camera with her. I, I don't remember either. Either way, um, they have people like that, but I don't like it. So 
I guess what I'm saying is Ven's going to have to go for two years. It's going to have to go for two years. And after two years is when you're finally going to go, oh, they've got that one show with that one person. That's what it's going to be. But, but right now isn't it. And they have to hope that they've got enough runway at the end of the two years that they can go like, oh shit, we're actually like just about to break even. Let's keep going. Or they blow all their money in the first year. And then at that, at that point, they won't have built up the personality they needed to continue the network. Um, it's just going to boil down to that. I mean, it always does. That's why Twitch and YouTube, the personalities that you guys watch um, on a daily basis, that's why they have such an advantage. Because Kraken was able to start when he was 15. Lawrence was able to just like be like, you know what? I'm just going to go on stream for a little bit. And hey, I might take a hit on money. I might take a hit on that or whatever. But uh, I could use this to build up my, uh, my little tiny business here. And it's the same with me. Like it's this tiny little business that we're building up very, very slowly. Whereas Venn is a television network and they're, they're, blo they're blowing millions of dollars on this thing that may or may not work. Um, and they're not going to see a profit for years. And that doesn't always work out. Tell you the truth. It very rarely works out. Um, so it's, uh, but Hey, who knows? Venn could be the Tesla of, of, uh, gaming networks. You never know. You never know. Uh, I have a question. I, I guess I'll pat, like, I have a question for you, Bruce, you Kraken, and also chat. I am really fascinated about this because a lot of, a lot of, uh, I think, uh, millennials and Gen Zers got excited about G4. But I wonder, like, if G4 existed in exactly the same way now, I really doubt, uh, maybe this is again my cynicism, but I doubt that somebody who really wants a game review would wait, like, three weeks to see a five minute review that's half kind of, kind, like, half maybe 50% success rate jokes. Um, is there still a market for that? I, I guess the best analog is like somebody like Angry Joe. He comes out with a review way later, but it's hyper-produced, crammed with jokes and bits. And that maybe that's the closest analog I can think of. Uh, but what, like for, yeah, so Trey says, I would just go to YouTube for reviews. Can you imagine a niche outside of what Bruce said, which is finding good talent that somehow doesn't already have their own YouTube channel or doesn't have their own place like what what's what's left what what content can a gaming network or a gaming forward network bring you that you don't already see faster and, and better and more tuned to what you want um that's kind of where my head's been spinning lately so i'm curious what you guys think Probably um, should have directed that yeah crack can go <laughs> i'm i guess I'm, I'm still i'm trying to formulate the the question into mm. uh answerable terms I, the the question is um, what is the scenario in which you would watch a review on TV compared to internet or just gaming content in general? What, like what oh. gaming content do you yearn for that has yet to be satisfied by the internet and independent content creators? Um, I think I'm always curious what really creative people like us would do with, uh, <laughs> like, a much bigger scope and scale and given a lot more runway where it's not like, oh shit, I got a stream tomorrow. What am I going to do? All right, I'll message this person, this person. Uh, this game is coming out recently. I guess I can make an overlay that'll take me, you know, two hours. Uh, okay, let's see. I'll make a chat bot. Uh, I can do sub sounds. All right, that's going to take me another like 30 minutes to get sounds from this game and then put that as a like, sub alert. You know, that's, that's kind of the extent of our production and bandwidth right now. Um, but if we had a whole studio behind us, um, and this is also, I mean, I'm biased cause this is partly what I'm kind of committing my, my, my job to now outside of streaming is to build out this sort of resource for streamers. But I think that streamers in general, and I, I think I talked to you guys about this when I did, uh, the operation Kingpin thing, like a year or some ago, like last November, um, or last uh, January, uh, Streamers have like the most unique set of skills right now, I think, as entertainers in this industry. Um, between our ability for improv, but also playing off of a faceless, constantly adapting audience, like that stuff you don't get trained for um, in like in, you know, acting school. So I think there's a really interesting and really massive set of skilled and trained entertainers out here that are kind of locked in their kind of, you know, personal amateur production and could be opened up 
with a bit more budget and you know studio backing and foresight you can actually plan a show where we can use what we've learned from streaming in a lot more uh widespread way i guess um is mm. kind of how i'm imagining it that's a really good point i never i never even thought of that you're you're totally right craig and that's like a bunch of people with really interesting skills that have never existed before <laughs> like literally never um I'll, uh, to answer your question previous, Lawrence, the only thing that I'm looking for on the internet that I don't have yet is, is again, personality based content. That's all it is. So if I could find any number of reviews, but if I really agree with Ben Kuchera, um, and I love Ben Kuchera's, uh, reviews then I'm always going to go and look for Ben Kuchera's review, you know, like, mm -hmm. and that's what I was, that's what I'm saying about Vanner G4 or whatever. It's like, well, what does, you know, Kevin Pereira think about uh, this video game is like, I'm going to go watch G4 for that. Um, or what does uh, Morgan Webb think of, uh, you know, Ghost of Tsushima? Oh, well, I'll go check out X-Play. It's like, that's the whole point is that there has to be this, like, it's not, we said this a thousand times when we were at Mach uh, Machinima. It's not about the Machinima brand. It's about the people at Machinima. Hmm. And that same thing applies to all of your life, by the way. It's not about the brand that was made. It's not about like Kleenex or it's not about, Comcast. It's about the people at Comcast. It's about the people at Kleenex that make that stuff and they stamp their personality on it. So it's the same, it's the same deal. But uh, now since personalities are so accessible on Twitch and YouTube, they have to be even more accessible on these uh, weird gaming networks now. Okay. That, that, I have a follow-up question then, Bruce, because I, I wholly agree. Uh, I think we, you know, I think you identified it before I think anyone else that I knew did is that, you know, personality was at the heart of everything. Here's here's the real fun question. Can you envision a system where a personality who is carrying the content for lack of, you know, lack of a better phrase, can you envision a system where a network or a, a, a corporation or whatever pays them enough to make them want to stay? Because if it's all them and they're carrying it, then I think like we've seen sooner or later, those people figure they out leave. that they can just, yeah, they can just leave. And, and then <laughs> they, they take the audience with them and then they can do all the work themselves or hire representation. So mm. it's, it, it, it's this interesting and, and uh, from, from my visibility, which is not absolute, seems like an almost unsolvable problem where the network system either gets big talent they can't afford in perpetuity or they groom they well groom is, has connotations they find new con or new personalities that then grow and mature with holy crap there's so many loud planes outside um <laughs> they find uh they find new talent and then that talent blossoms and and eventually that talent figures out that they're getting underpaid or underserved so i don't That's know right. i i feel like yeah i feel like the system is such that if personalities are carrying your network to the network itself, itself, the like the tax that goes into running a network and having an HR department and a legal department and sales that like kicks off at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday to go drink and like all of these like things that start to happen in a corporate system and all these like little elements of bloat, it eventually means that that person who is or those people who are at the core of it will figure out that they are doing a lot of heavy lifting for the sake of an entire company that doesn't really reward them to the extent they feel that they should be rewarded. And again, the cycle just turns anew. So I, right. I wonder if it's possible to, like, is it even possible to do this? It's, it's I, crashed so many times. I, I would say in my perfect world, I think studios and, you know, networks should take lessons from the models that are currently working, which is, you know, Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> but like, you know, <laughs> the subscription systems that are now prevalent for, you know, supporting any uh, creators that you're fans of. Um, I mean, there's there's ways, I think, not necessarily through like a subscription to an individual within a show, but if you can track, you know, okay, this segment is doing this well, you know, if there's like mechanics of that show that let you measure audience kind of retention and uh, engagement, and then you give, you know, the host of that show that is the one driving it, you know, a cut of you know, a, a proportional cut based on how much they're able to kind of drive people behind it. And then they're motivated to do a better job. And, you know, the, the studio owns the means of how they can, uh, you know, run this show and reach this audience. And then it's just kind of a scaling performance uh, kind of payout. So, so I can, 
I have some insight because you guys are both headed towards exactly the same conclusion, which is the inmates run the asylum. And that's what it should be. And that's what it always should have been. And by the way, that's what YouTube and Twitch is. A YouTube channel is run by the person that is the talent. Um, Twitch channel is run by the person that's the talent. They're the producer and the talent. And uh, knowing the things that I know about G4 now, in the sense that G4 is coming back in like a year or whatever it is, um, the people that were the inmates in the asylum at G4 are now running it. Um, mm -hmm. So the the names that I've seen named were like Brian Terwilliger or Terwilliger and uh, Blair Herder and another guy named Mike Shaw. These were all people that I worked side by side with uh, as producers at G4. And we were always like, man, these executives are fucking it up. Because we knew the executives were fucking it up. And now, ideally, <laughs> they are able to then run it correctly because they know the mistakes that were made. It might be too late, by the way. It may be too late for that. I don't know. Um, but uh, the people that I worked with side by side that, that were the producers there are now going to be running it. Um, and that, in my opinion, is the only way that this can work, is mm -hmm. the person that, that has, has, has seen all sides of it, um, has seen the talent side, has seen the producer side, has seen the, the business side, all of it, and can now bring all those skills to bear and be like, okay, like let's figure out a way to uh, run G4 the way it should have been run 10 years ago. Um, and Venn Ven also, I don't know the people behind Venn. I don't know them nearly as well as I know the people that uh, may be starting G4 again. But like, um, I was reading through the names. Uh, Mark Merrill, who's a co-founder of Riot. Mike Morheim, who's co-founder of Blizzard. Uh, Kevin Lin, who's a co-founder of Twitch. Like these are all founders of like huge, huge companies that became very, very successful. Um, and these are people that have invested in Venn. So are they too far removed mm. from, from building that brand that they did 10 years ago, 15 years ago? Are they now too rich? Are they too out of touch? Or are they still down in the trenches? And they have, do they still know what makes good content even you know, 10, 15 years later? When, I mean, we've seen so many sea changes across all of this content and across the internet. I mean, fucking, you guys, we're, we're, we're adapting to new content every six months on, on Twitch or YouTube. So it's just really, it's really interesting. Um, I, uh, it's just, it's always been about the inmates running the asylum. It's, I, I, I think that's the best way to put it for me. And I, I hope that that's what happens. I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. I, I like that interpretation. I think that's a, a pretty progressive, but like really grounded interpretation. It's just, it's a tough one to affect from the bottom up. <laughs> you know, we just need yeah. a, you mean anymore? I mean, and you know, who knows, maybe G4, if it is really run by the old uh, kind of guard that used to, you know, be the, the front facing people that have, were, you know, intimately involved with production, then maybe they do have more, uh, you know, share that perspective and like it, we can actually change stuff. But who knows? I, I think someone will, more companies will head that direction in the future. It's just kind of a domino effect, hopefully. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, I, like Lawrence and I were, you know, I, I don't want Lawrence to sound too cynical. I don't want to sound too cynical, but I want, I want these things to succeed so that I have stuff to watch. I want to watch new stuff um, that I like. I, I, I bought in wholly to G4 when it was first on television. When it, when it was like a 2002, 2003, whatever it was. When I discovered G4, I was in. I watched that shit all the fucking time. And I knew it was cringy. I knew it was bad, but I'd never seen it before. It was new. So uh, I loved it. So I fucking loved it. And I showed all my friends and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe video games on fucking television. You're blowing my mind. Um, so there, that, I don't know that we have that anymore. <laughs> I don't know that we have innovation when it comes to Venn or G4, this may just be retreading uh, old ground. I don't, I don't know. Well, I appreciate the attempt. Uh, it's all, like, the, despite my, my rampant cynicism, it is, it is always so much easier to sit back and be like, ah, oh, I tried it before, let's not try it again. Uh, so, you know, iterating and attempting and, and pursuing and pivoting, like that's how, that's how success happens. It's, it's not mm -hmm. necessarily that you, you know, come out of the gate strong. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the, the journey too. I think uh, I think the ultimate tragedy would it, in the inmates running the asylum scenario is that you have people come in at the top and sort of guide the process in the way that they identified were problems before, 
but then they run into the same problems and can't find a way to fix them. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like that might be the ultimate thing of like you come in from the talent or the production side, and now you're you're executive producing or something like that, and you start to see the same problems happen where your highest rated shows, the talent on that show starts making demands, and you're like, you know what? Great, we'll take care of you. We'll make sure you you, won't, you want to stay here and you don't start looking. Um, but I could I could definitely see that talent hunger just going and going and going. I feel like sometimes. The more yep. you give somebody, the more they think they deserve, or I don't know. The, ambition is an interesting thing, uh, but yeah, I I I, empath I would empathize very fully with somebody who went through it the first time and like come back. Okay, we're gonna do it right, and then despite their best intentions, the same thing keep happening. That would uh, that makes my skin crawl to think about, but <laughs> that's why it's uh, that's why it's brave to step up and try. You know, it really is. I, I and it's uh, there's a lot of money lost. Um, as we've seen, and I, like I think the larger uh, metaphor, I guess analog to to what a Venn or a G four is, is like CISO or Quibi or what was it? Uh, what was the name of that fucking Go ninety? Mm. Um, those like they're like just VOD services that Verizon or whoever else will put on and throw a fucking bunch of money at and be like, look at this, all these cool shows you want to watch, like blank and blank, and then like shows you've never heard of and never wanted to see, and you're like why would I ever watch this? It, again, it always comes back down to that, that they have to have something that people like. It's just that simple. Just come up with one show. <laughs> like, I don't understand why it's so hard. I, I, it's, it's such an interesting thing. It must be, it, there must be an ad sales bridge that we don't know about. Because, like, maybe ad sales, like Timo will go to Ven and go, like, Ven, we need you to have 10 programs. Not one. 10 and they have to be, you know, they've got to be a news program. There's got to be an arcade program. There's got to be a personality, blah, 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 blah. And so then they want to buy across all 10 versus just coming up with one really good show to start Venn. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. I can't figure it out. <laughs> I guess you have to you have to seem like it's already a fertile valley filled with content and viewers to everyone. You, you have to, hmm. like, come out of the gate talking like you're already a success. We already have this whole network. We have a Venn universe that's thriving. Uh, and meanwhile, yeah, it's, it's a whiteboard filled with, like, what if we taught somebody to play a video game? Like, what if what if we got an eSports star and challenged them to be good at other games? Like, and that one's circled <laughs> with, like, an arrow pointing to it. Um, you know, I, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, I'm not sure. I, I and, and, and Bruce, I know you and I have talked about it, but that's why it's so intoxicating to sort of scale uh, organically. Um do a bunch of experiments, see which ones have a little spark to them and put more resources on it until you find the extent of that flame and then just be like, okay, that's good. Instead of having to start at the top and then drag everything up to that level, start, yeah. at, start at the bottom. Um, I mean, I'm, bottom is, is not exactly true because we both, I mean, I think we all have a certain amount of legacy, but yeah, like um, uh, not, not I mean, to get... Craig had, Craig had started from the bottom. Craig that's had started true. from the very, very beginning. Like, that's what he did. Hell yeah, baby. Yeah. 14 years old, no one cared about me. And they, and now, look at me. Got a million dollar contract on Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think you have a good point, uh, Lawrence. I mean, that's kind of actually how I see, that's like my favorite thing about Twitch, um, if I had to kind of boil it down, is it's a really uh, great medium to experiment and try something new, either creatively, you know, uh, like personality wise, um, you know, multiplayer versus like solo act stuff and like how you run your show is very organic and, and modular and like you can kind of evolve it over time. And therefore, you know, if you make a new, like I'm la launching a new series, this is how I'm going to run this series. And you see, okay, after like a month, do people want more of that? Is it actually performing as well as the other stuff? You know, if so, maybe actually I want to move my channel more that direction. Um, and it's a lot easier to do that in this than I would argue any other medium, like even YouTube. Um, yeah. YouTube's probably second best, but like you know, YouTube's a lot more rigid than than even Twitch is. No, it's true. That's true. Um, yeah, I, I I just really hope it works. I mean, like I like I said, the only reason I always hope this stuff goes well is because I'm sure there are a lot of really good people working for Vin, um, a few of which I know, uh, and it's the same with G4. I I always hope that these sorts of things succeed. But um, the thing I know about business is that most of the time, the businesses that start really, really small and scale up 
slowly or um, have some sort of, you know, really, really amazing product to start with and then branch off from that. That's the way those, those businesses succeed generally. Not always, not always, but generally. Um, there are a few exceptions uh, like Netflix and Tesla, um, but Netflix honestly started with a, a really amazing concept of streaming video and nobody had ever done it before. Mm -hmm. Tesla's, Tesla's the same way. It started with an amazing concept with, a, with just an electric car that was uh, um, something that people hadn't seen before really, uh, uh, you know, made, made for the consumer. And now they've scaled up and they're, they're, Tesla's just started making money. Netflix is still losing a fuck ton of money. Um, but they started with that amazing concept. Now there's, and again, then there's the flip side, which is starting really small, building your business from the ground up organically, and eventually it gets to be this, you know, titan of industry, but that takes 20, 30 years. Um, and so, yeah, so there's a, Lawrence and I have seen this time and time again, where there's like a bunch of angel investors come in and throw a bunch of money at it, and then it disappears in a year. And we all yep. go, what? Why did they do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's it's a mentality I I don't ever understand. But when an investor can throw five million at something, just maybe because it might pay off, who knows? That's that's the stuff that that blows my mind. There are investors out there that all they need is a real solid thirty minute pitch from a, a money bro that they trust, and they're in for like ten mil. Uh, because yeah, when you're investing, like all you need is one or two of your investments to to pay off big. Um, at least that's my, that's my very crappy, poor person understanding of how that mentality can work sometimes. Um, yeah. Eh. Oh, speaking of which, yes, chat, chat's right. Netflix started with DVDs in the mail, but which by the way, was also a concept you'd never heard of. Um, and they, they pivoted so hard that I forgot they even did that. <laughs> so it's, uh, they still started with a, with a concept that nobody really tried before and, it, and they made it work. So it, it's just, it requires that, it requires that silver bullet. Uh, if you're going to start that way, not a lot of people have that. Very true. I, one yeah. other thing that another like cycle that I've seen a lot is that some people do have that silver bullet and then like everything else they try to scale into doesn't quite pan out. Um, that's, a, that's always an interesting dynamic is, is I guess it's that lightning in a bottle phenomenon, how you, you, you land the jump once. So people give you a lot of money to keep jumping and then it's just trip after trip after trip after that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. but it's a fun ride to burn the money, I guess. Um, which <laughs> yeah. I mean, speaking of, I guess, I guess we'll see, uh, how long it takes for Ven to start throwing huge parties with like celebrity DJs and stuff. Oh Ho man. Hopefully they are. Are you kidding? They're going to do that right away. Well, we're going to, we're going to, we're all going to be invited to a Ven party. We're going to get post, invited post COVID. You, I guarantee we're all on oh, that list. Post baby. COVID. All right. So, never. so like, ah, you know, like nine months from now or whatever. Um, but Post COVID, we're all going to that big old Venn party. It's gonna be DJ'd by Drake, and it's gonna be fucking awesome. All right, guys. I Can't hope you're wait. excited. I'm, I'm excited. Drink so much well I miss vodka. parties. I I miss parties too. That's uh, uh, by the way. Speaking of making money from the ground up, we have an ad read today. <gasps> no way. Yeah, this podcast is brought to you by NordVPN. That's right. They came Nord, back. NordVPN came back. They like our podcast so much, they still want to continue selling on it. So, uh, yes, this podcast, Talk to the Internet, it's brought to you by NordVPN.com, which is a VPN service. Do you guys know what a VPN service is? It's basically, uh, it routes your internet traffic through a bunch of different servers throughout the world, uh, protecting all of your data, uh, protecting your internet traffic in general. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming most people that are listening to this know what a VPN is. So, um, I'll start with the, the deal. It is the last chance, I think, today or one, one of the last few days to get this three-year deal for $3.49 a month, $3.50 a month, you go to nordvpn.com slash talk to internet and use coupon code talk to internet to get 70% off a three year plan and an extra month for free. So it's $3.49 a month for three years. It ends up being about 126 bucks, bucks to use NordVPN for three years. Um, and uh, like I said, I'll just kind of talk a little bit about what NordVPN has over other VPN services. Uh, they're super fast servers, 5,500 plus servers in 60 countries. Um, you can unlock Netflix, like if it's region locked, you can watch uh, Netflix in another region and other entertainment websites. Uh, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, if you pay for the three year contract, 125 bucks, 126 bucks, and uh, you're like, you know what? I'm not even using this. 
you get your money back in, in a month, no problem. Um, there's also a faster connection uh, through VPN than most other VPNs uh, with Nordlynx. And Nordlynx is basically, um, to not explain it too much, but uh, Nordlynx uses a WireGuard protocol, which generally speeds up your VPN speeds up to twice. And then in addition, WireGuard uh, was sort of regarded as not very secure. Well, um, NordVPN worked on their own technology to make it secure called Nordlynx. So combining WireGuard with Nordlynx, you've got a super fast uh, VPN that you can use um, for three years if you uh, use our coupon code. You can also use it on up to six simultaneous uh, connections. Um, it works even in China. We're not, I know we're, not, we're nobody's going anywhere for a very long time, but if you're going to China, you could use it. <laughs> you could use it. So again, uh, this podcast is brought to you by NordVPN, nordvpn.com slash talk to internet. Get the three-year deal for $3.49 a month. Uh, you get 70% off the three-year plan and an extra month for free. We thank you again, NordVPN, for uh, for sponsoring our little podcast. Um, Thanks, helping Nord. Us, yeah, helping us build this little guy from the ground up. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about awesome. it, Lawrence. Yeah, Back was, to you. My uh, Hold on. My, my, my Nord command wasn't turned on, but now it is. Oh, you were showing, you were Nord showing Nord on the... On a, oh, yeah. They you had showing Nord on the stream, too? Visual accompaniment. The oh. whole nine yards. Production yeah. was out the wazoo today. Wow. Thank you, Lawrence. I really appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. I'm trying to trying to check off all boxes. Yes, thank you, NordVPN. Uh yeah, with the uh, with um what is it? Uh net neutrality, dead and gone. I think it's uh it's about time to uh to start looking towards private industry to anonymize your user data. Uh because things are things are gonna get weird. They won't. It won't mm -hmm. happen overnight, and you probably won't notice. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, they, yeah. uh, all of these, all of the companies that want to bend the internet to their will are going to try to make it as invisible as possible. So it's the it's the you know turning the temperature up with the frog in the pot. Is it frog? Yes. Oh, not frog. It is frog. It's, it's, it is the frog. Yeah. Because uh, he doesn't yeah. he doesn't realize it's getting boiled, and all of a sudden, yep, he, he's dying. <laughs> yeah. So we're saying, why don't you switch pots? Wait. No, not quite. I'm hop trying out. to I'm trying to save this analogy. Yeah, hop out. Hop, hop. out onto the lo on the nearby diving board and then uh, subscribe to NordVPN for three months. There we go. Three right. years. Three years. Three three years, yes, yeah. three years. <laughs> a, a lot of people were asking again, I'll I'll say it. Uh, the total cost there's about 126 bucks. Um, because people were like three forty nine a month for three years, I can't do the math. Well, I did it. It's hundred and twenty six dollars. <laughs> so there you go. Beautiful. Thank you, NordVPN. Uh, I've never eaten boiled frog legs. Oh wait, no, I take that back. I think I did. I've I tried, I, but then I got really sad because I like frogs. And as a kid, I had like a pet frog, and then I I got oh. sad, so I stopped. You had a pet frog? <laughs> uh, not really an official one. I think I told the story on stream before at some point. It. Uh, oh by, yes. An oh, unofficial yeah. frog. It was it was a, a wild frog in my backyard. Did I tell the story? I don't know that you did. Okay. Um, let's Wait, see. Is this so, the one where you like borrowed it from the classroom and brought it home? Am I? No. Okay. No, that wasn't me. Uh, <laughs> this, this is a story, uh, where as a kid, I loved playing outside. Uh, I loved worms. I had like a lot of friends, like, you know, I, I, I the worms are my friends, you know, I'd oh, get in the dirt nice. and I'd like, you know, really play nice. with them. I wouldn't hurt them. I was very careful not to hurt any animals. Of course. Of um, course. And then I found a, uh, a frog that lived in my backyard, specifically under this, uh, this little stone slab um, in the corner of my backyard. And so every day I'd go and I'd open it um, and he'd just be resting there. And like, I'd like, you know, take him out and we'd like, you know, he'd hop around. And then when we were done, I'd like put him back and like, you know, put the, put the rock back. Um, and this went on for like, I think a month maybe of like me playing with this frog whenever I would go outside and, and you know, he was always just hanging out, um, and you know we had so many good adventures. And then one day, I checked under the rock, and he wasn't there. And I was really sad. And I was like, "Oh no, I guess he, you know, he moved on, or you know, he's he's out, bu he's busy today, or something." Mm -hmm. So I I kept checking back, and he wasn't there. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. And then eventually, I find him, and he's and he's a little bit bigger, uh, but you know, I'm like, "Hey, okay, you know, he, he doesn't really behave like my." Like he used to, but like, you know, uh -huh. that's fine. It's it's my frog. Um, and 
I played with him, but I didn't really feel like it was right because he just he wasn't quite himself, and I was like, I could tell. Uh -huh. um, and uh -huh. so I uh, I put him back under his rock, and then I go you know to bed, and then I come back out the next day to check on him, um, and he uh, was crushed to death by the rock because uh, that wasn't my same frog; it was a different frog <laughs> uh, that was just bigger, and uh, I guess like just never left the rock and just you know died in there there and i was so haunted by guilt that i never uh went back out to that side of the yard ever again and it just was became a a no a no-go zone for me and I, to this day I, 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 i'm Hold still on. yeah why did you put the frog under the rock was there a hole under the rock yeah the yeah, yeah it's like it's oh. like a burrow and oh okay yeah right, i'm not, good, I'm not right. just like this is your rock and fucking like uh, place him <laughs> down on him it was like no, it, he had like a little burrow there, and uh, oh, thank God! All right, all right. And he would like come in and out of it, you know. That's I, yeah. I didn't like decide this is where you live. This is like, you know, that was his house. <laughs> um, I just moved a different frog that didn't fit in that house into his house, and that frog did not like it there. Uh, and then yeah. the rock, the rock collapsed on the hole. It sounds like yeah, either that or like he couldn't lift it off. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what the situation was. So you was. suffocated the frog, is what it sounds like. You know, there was air, the air could get in. <laughs> uh huh. But I don't think he could get out. So you know, okay. whatever the, I I All don't right. I didn't want to dwell on it. As soon as I saw what had happened, I was like haunted, and I uh, and I kind of fled from that um, that scene. I mean, I left the rock off, but by then it was too late. I think you didn't you didn't mean to, Craig. I didn't mean to. I'm, uh, you didn't mean to, and I don't think that you are that kind of person that would ever try and kill a frog. Um, you are a, a very gentle, nice human being that would never do that to another living thing. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Bruce. I yeah, I'm just, I'm just I believe trying that to reassure well. you because you did kill that frog. You murdered it. Yeah, I like yeah. I like how your reaction is is basically straight out of a Charles Dickens novel. Or something tragic happened, and then you basically walled physically and mentally that entire section of your house out of out of your existence. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's there's like cobwebs, but that part of the yard is like overgrown, and somebody's like, yeah. "Hey, what's going on over there?" And you just get really quiet and weird. You're like we don't we don't talk about that part of the yard. Yeah, anymore. I mean, but think of all the the like you know crazy like backstory and and character development I had as a kid having killed my best friend frog but it actually wasn't my best friend it was just one that looked kind of like him but i and i and i think deep down i knew it wasn't him but i was like you know i really wanted it to be so like i i convinced myself and it ended up there's, in a death there's an even more tragic side to the story which is the frog that was actually your friend left he couldn't tolerate you ah uh. so he left and you killed another frog Maybe, hold on a second, Kraken, maybe subconsciously you were so angry that your friend left that you killed another frog in your rage. I think you are potentially the worst psychologist I've ever heard. <laughs> and I couldn't disagree more, but uh, at the same time, I don't think this conversation is worth continuing anymore. So I'm just going to leave it there. No, um, I was actually going to identify with Kraken and say <laughs> any any time that like a fish died or like I had a lizard that died or like, you know, that kind of thing. You felt like basically I felt like I killed him, even if like the, yeah. the animal just died at night or whatever. Like it like I would I'd fed it and I made sure it was warm enough and I made sure it had the you know, its water was changed or whatever. And it still died. I was always like, fuck, man. I wonder if that fish like if it had not been in my care, would it have survived? <laughs> You know, like, did I kill it? Did I effectively kill this fish? And then I realized no, and I flushed it down the toilet, and I was fine. I let it go. Yeah, Bruce is a man. <laughs> he gets over these things. Quickly. Right away. Maybe a little too like quickly, but. Five minutes, <laughs> right away. Bang, the fish is gone. I throw it in the, throw it in the, it's one of my, my favorite Simpsons clips. Uh, I try not to quote the Simpsons very often, but it's one of my favorite, which is, uh, it's the veter uh, they're at a veterinarian's office because they had to take Santa's little helper to the to the vet, and the the vet doctor is working on this hamster, and he's like he's like shocking it. It's like clear, 
clear. And it's like super dramatic. He's trying to bring this hamster back to life with the, um, the paddles. And he can't do it. And he goes, this is the part of the job I hate. And he picks it up by the tail and throws it in the trash can. <laughs> Doesn't it like hit a backboard and go through like it, a little it, basketball yeah. hoop? It does. It, it, goes, it goes through a novelty basketball hoop and it cracks me up <laughs> every single time. Because like, it, it's true. He's trying to keep this hamster alive. But what are you going to do with the ha- when it, when it, if it, the hamster dies? You're just going to throw it in the garbage. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, it kind of sucks, but that's what's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, oh, I love that. Man, I love that. Uh, Craig, and I've, having done uh, some cursory Googling a few years ago, I feel like I'm qualified to, to diagnose your, your condition. Um, mm. Or rather, uh, let's see, prescribe, uh, prescribe treatment, I guess, is what I'm prepared oh. to do. Qualified and prepared to do. Uh, there's, there's something called exposure <laughs> therapy, where uh, you basically, through degrees, you get somebody closer and closer to the element of their fear and then through exposure, they learn behavior patterns to basically overwrite their rational fear. So if somebody's afraid of elevators, you know, you eventually get them closer and closer to stepping into an elevator and, and taking it and figuring out that nothing's wrong. So what I propose for you is that we get you another frog, potentially an even cuter frog. And mm. then we have, we start with pebbles, very small rocks. And you put a tiny little pebble on that, ro- on that frog every day. And you, you can per- perceive that that frog is fine. And then we gradually step it up to larger and larger rocks. And before long, you'll be cured. How will I? Okay. <laughs> I'm having a hard time unpacking this. Sure. Exposure therapy is a complicated okay. a concept. I can pull it up a, here on Wikipedia. What am I being cured of? B, oh. how is this going to cure me? C, I already have the pet the peepo emote on my channel. So I feel like I've already done this. Oh. Yeah, but is the peepo getting crushed by a giant rock? It's a, it's a little hand and it pets him and he squishes. See? That's oh, nice. that's really nice. I, I feel like you have, you, you admitted yourself that you have such strong resentment and, uh, and disgrace, uh, shame even, uh, from this <laughs> traumatic event. So what I endeavor to do is to relieve you of those, of those horrible emotions that are dogging you even today. And I would say holding you back from your true potential. Uh-huh. You know, I think I really had gotten over it until this actual podcast yeah you so have started talking you about it yeah. I, uh, it sounds like you, you it sounds like you have yeah, yeah no i again as somebody who's googled a little bit i'm i can pretty much tell you haven't gotten over it at all so um i'm gonna go ahead and say i wish i didn't tell this story and uh you know <laughs> thanks for the thanks for the bit guys <laughs> no problem i have already told the story about how my rat died uh in childbirth i think i've told you that that's i've told that story a hundred times so i'm not gonna tell it again uh either way it was incredibly traumatic and I'll never forget the size of that rat's womb as a baby was coming through it, and the the, the terror, the the look of terror on its face as it as it died in childbirth. I'll never forget. Hmm. That's how I knew I wasn't a psychopath. Was when I saw this and I went oh, and I started cry- tears tears welled up and I started crying. Even though it was just a rat, there are literally billions of rats, but it was my rat. Mm-hmm. And I had felt terrible that I killed it. It's life and it's precious. It's life and it's precious. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Bruce, I, I'm, a, I'm prepared to prescribe a similar treatment to you. Please do. Yeah, hand it over. Uh, I say, uh, you know, this might get a little dicey, COVID and all. But uh, I say we both, uh, you and I, I'll do, I'll do the heavy mm. lifting here. We'll go into a hospital. We'll claim to be parents of whoever. Who knows? I'm sure we can, we can weasel our way through it once we get there. But we get you closer and closer to birth. It sounds like that's where your, your trauma is. We get you in that hospital. Yep. We get you staring at some woman you've never met before in your life. And when that baby just explodes right on out of that birth canal, you'll be cured. Because you'll see that birth is not a traumatic experience. It's, in fact, quite beautiful. Um, provided that, you know, you, you shield yourself from the, the rocketing uh, placenta and afterbirth that flies out of a human after that. <laughs> I will put it this way. I will go do that if... Only Kraken also agrees to the frog exposure therapy. No. Oh, I'm going to save right. us both from this. All right. So he's not going to do it. I, I'm, I will be the wet blanket on this bit, and I throw myself willingly onto the fire. Somebody needs to send Kraken a frog. That's what, that's what <laughs> needs to happen. Somebody needs to send Kraken a frog. Do not, do not send me a frog. In a, in a tank, in an amphibious tank, so that you, can, you and the frog can live out you know, 10 years of life. I don't know how long frogs live, but you, you guys can be friends forever. 
And then when he dies at the ripe old age of 10 or whatever, however long frogs live, um, then you can be like, hey, I have done your species okay. It's like what I want to do with the uh, tortoises. I want to have a tortoise that lives for 150 years that I can pass on to my children. So that that way the tortoise will carry on my legacy. Because I, I had a pet turtle too. I, I mean, I did too. I had a pet turtle for 10 years, but he left. He left? Um, yeah, I had an ex-girlfriend had him in a yard and then she left the gate open and he bailed. Um, Must but, have taken a while. I mean, yeah, I did. He's a turtle, but they left it open overnight, so he's uh, gone. Um, either way, uh, I want a tortoise because those guys live for a really long time and they've seen everything. Yeah. They, they're wise beyond their years. Um, and I think the secrets of the universe are locked in turtles. I don't know. I don't know if you guys think that, but I do. I definitely think that. <laughs> interesting okay, take. Okay. What I, an interesting take. Did you guys not see the end of Avatar? I okay, fair. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'd love to see you expound on that with more evidence than Avatar. There's lots more evidence. Is it locked in turtles, as in like they they know, but they're just not going to tell, or or like literally, there's a there's a little message in every turtle, and you just got to find it. There's a little message in every turtle. <laughs> Hmm. Come on. Like, like a like fortune cookie. Life. Yes, about life. And yes, like a fortune cookie. Yes to both of your answers. Everyone knows that turtles are the best. Yes. I, I feel strongly, strongly that immortality will be unlocked when we can transfer our human consciousness into the body of a tortoise. Oh, mm. I would love to do that. That would be fantastic. Man. Only downside, harder to play video games. Yeah, that's a good we, point. We could get around that. Yeah. They had Microsoft got that adaptive <laughs> controller. They're thinking ahead. They're in they're in the year yeah. 3030. Maybe oh, maybe Microsoft already has a, a Eternal Gamer Tortoise in their basement, and that's why they made the controller. Eternal Gamer Tortoise. Wow, that is a <laughs> horrible way to uh to, to sideline anyone with a slight disability that actually uses those as a real human to play video games. No, it's for the turtles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, these are all jokes, guys. We're just yeah. telling jokes. I I was thinking that more as like a game like a gamer tag, Eternal Gamer Tortoise. I would Ooh. totally, I would totally make that my my stick, dude. I mean, you can you can do that now if you wanted to change your gamer tag right now. You think I can rebrand right now? I think I'm like a bit far in on Kraken, but no, no. You just you know you have Kraken and Kraken Two. Yeah. Then make uh, Eternal Gamer Tortoise One. Make that channel. Hmm. There you go. Okay. You know, maybe I, you're right. Everybody loves tortoises, right, chat? Yep. Everyone loves They're, them. Have you guys played ED? I, I feel like, Lawrence, you played EDF, right? Oh, yeah. No. Um, have you used the air tortoise? I always think about the air tortoise when I think of tortoise. Air tortoise um, is a, a magnificent <laughs> weapon befitting of the most intelligent and wisest of animals. Yes. I was going to say, yeah, like, your gimmick for, for being the eternal gamer tortoise, it has to be, like, you play very slowly but you're incredibly wise throughout your video mm. game playing. That's right. I've wondered about know. that. We all know the tortoise and the hare story. We all know. Slow and steady wins the race. If the fast one sleeps first. Yes. But the fast one will sleep first because that's because he's fast and he burns a lot of energy. Mm. No. Okay. Not, not always. Not always. The Olympics, I feel like, is a good example that often people can keep running without sleeping. You're right about that. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> you got to be there. All right. Well, you win that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've wondered about that though. I so through the through the magic of Twitch streaming, we I would say have kind of like archetypes of the way people play games. Uh, you know, there's people who play extremely well. Uh, so you watch them for their their skill at the game, whether it's, you know, an esports player or something like that. You watch people that maybe have a certain niche of the kinds of games they play and the way they talk about them. People that play like older, weirder games from other markets and sort of share lore about it. When are we going to get somebody who plays games artistically? Like they play a game like they're performing uh, at a concert. And when you watch their gameplay, it's just the gameplay. The the buttons they hit, the camera. Kraken's, Kraken's pointing at it's himself. It's Kraken? It's you. You're the yes. you're the Steven Spielberg of Let's Plays. I yeah. I don't play to win. I play for you know for art. Um, and <laughs> I I think a perfect example of this is my Total War 
series. You know, I, I will I will set up amazing cinematic moments and I will bring in, you know, I literally played opera and I've I've slowed it down and I get panning shots and you see like the giant, you know, unhinged maw of the Morn Ghoul like leaping on a poor Empire soldier and dropping him in his gullet as like you know, the music drops and then like I slowly pan around and we see, you know, a character moving away. That's all on live stream. Uh, you're, you're, uh, you're, I, that sounded more uh, arrogant than I meant. I was trying to say on YouTube, <laughs> Bed Bananas is the one to go to if you're looking for actual, uh, you know, machinima nowadays. There's very few machinima channels left, I think, that still uh, like actually try to pull out art like that, but I can. You know, I'm I am a little biased because he's my friend, but even if I wasn't, I'd say the same thing. It's, Lawrence, it's, uh, I just I just stuff. realized you guys just invented machinima. Yep. You, you're, yeah, machinima has been around for ever. Yeah. The I, the name. Yeah, it, it's funny that the name has persisted beyond the company. Uh, and yeah. Is now, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, it's is gone back to being what accepted. it originally was, like describing yeah, yeah. an actual concept and expression instead of a overhyped company. Run by I a love bunch of that. creepers. Yeah. I love that it started off as this thing and then like got muddied, but then the identity of it has stayed pure through the whole thing. Absolutely. So absolutely, yeah. yeah. We, we all remember Machinima for what it was, which was basically red versus blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it, it was high art, is what it was. I guess I guess people I'm trying to think of the big heavy hitters. There was like Bob and Steve, the like splinter cell clips on on G four. Yeah. Uh, things that things that people associate with Machinima. Yeah, it's pretty much just red versus blue. Oh yeah, RB and the Chief. Yeah, that's true. RB and the Chief. I like that one. Wait, Definitely. that's not Machinima. Never. That's not in a game. That was yeah. just stop uh, motion. Uh oh. Whoopsie. Uh -oh. Bing Whoopsie bong. doozy. <laughs> Whoopsie. Time to start banning people in chat. Well, they're same wrong. With red, same with red versus blue. I don't know when when they converted to it, but they. They, then they just started animating it. It yeah. wasn't even in Halo anymore. It wasn't a... Yeah, no. I guess, where, where do you draw the line? Does it have to be in a game engine with a normal controller to be Machinima? I'm sure that there Not are Not a normal who... controller, what? No, gross. <laughs> Bad, Lawrence. Hey, I, I'm just throwing out questions here. I can, apparently, Kraken's well, very heated about this. I that guess was you were a in the wrong question. Page thread. Oh, okay. Gatekeeping much? Okay, fine. Look, I made <laughs> Machinimas. I made Machinimas on Machinima.net or whatever the fuck. And I, I also... <laughs> I... I I make machine was now with with Ben. I I help him with his stuff, and he he has managed to actually. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna rant, not rant. What's the opposite of rant? I'm gonna rave about my my buddy Ben for a second. All right, do uh, it. He he's starting to incorporate actual original mod tools into the games that he make machine for in order to get like yeah like free cam stuff that didn't already exist. Like they're making you know mods for these games in order to get like effects that you couldn't possibly get in the base game or even yeah. with existing mods. And that's to me the next step is like when you actually have a team that can go in and like break a game down to its base components and then reassemble it into to tell whatever story you want. Um, so I don't know. I, I think there's still a future for that. YouTube isn't really the right the best place for it, but you know, who knows? Maybe like a G4 down the road would be well, I mean, a good place for something about, like that. You're talking about GTA RP. You're talking about like no yeah. and stuff. That's, yeah, that's like that's kind of yeah. what I mean. Like they're building their own tools to true to make I, machinima and GTA. I'd see instead of a sh machinima, the GTRP is more of a its own game platform and like role play mm -hmm. medium um, mm -hmm. that can be kind of reformatted for you know a machinima or just for a ongoing live stream series like a TV show um, or both. You know, you can make it you know recorded live and then edit it down in post like you know a lot of us youtubers have done so i don't know i think all of those models have a lot more they can go like a lot more places they can go oh yeah um, it's just kind of you need a team behind it uh to make it really effective it sounds Back like you're G4. bragging yeah, a little it sounds bit. like you're bragging oh um, no i'm i'm more asking for money yeah he's from... right he's right begging <laughs> for a production budget he wants a slice I'm, of that yeah. 19 million or whatever. i'm hoping that some sort of network you know some producers are listening to this and they're going to be like well, ha wow have he's i right. got some have I got some news for you? There's a new network called Ven. It just launched. No way. And and they're looking. <laughs> they're, and you they're and you've got a contact. I uh, do sort you of. think you think you can put you can you can put my name in? You can put in a good word for me. Well, uh, thanks, Bruce. I really and, I need this, dude. 
Me and uh, Double M, or Mike Morheim, as <gasps> most people know him. I you call know him Double, Double M. M? I call him Double M. You can't call I him that. I do too. He's, we're friends. I just uh, call him Double M, but no one else knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, we've been friends for about 40 years. And uh, Mike Morheim and I grew up together. He's wow. my brother, actually. He's my brother. What? And, yep. And uh, Bruce Morheim. <laughs> Marine. <laughs> if you need me to put me, uh, you in contact with him, I'm not going to do it. So. Oof. Your own brother? Yeah, my own brother. No, you, I, I can't trust you around him. Oof. Why? What yeah. do you think we're going to do? Ask him for money, like everybody does. <laughs> I'm not going to ask him for money. I'm going to ask him for an opportunity to make him money. Crick and I love what? money. Uh, <laughs> and I just have recently wandered into some investment capital. However, what? I love your idea. Love it to death. Wouldn't change a thing about it. But here's what I'm going to change. Uh, I have one <laughs> word for you. Esports. Oh, God. <laughs> You, figure, you find a way to get esports in there and we got us a deal. <laughs> oh, that's the, boy. That's what I, I saw that actually to pull us out of the joke a little bit. I saw that a, a hundred times on all of the Venn descriptions. They were all like, it's the newest esports gaming network. But now it's not. Now it's like changed identities to just broad gaming. It's, it's, it's just the easiest buzzword to get attention from a demographic of people that assume that's all that gave me is you know i don't know i i think it was a I, safe I way to get investment capital for a couple of years yeah, yeah 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 for but now not much anymore i feel like there there hasn't really been much of a return on esports uh in terms of for the investors so i don't know how they feel about it um can't imagine very good but you know who knows <laughs> maybe there are still some holdouts that believe in it uh i I think competitive gaming is totally a thing that can be turned into more consistent shows. I just don't think uh, modeling it exactly after every sports arena style show is is the way to do it. I just think that's yep. gonna, you know, you, there's no way to stand out from that anyway anymore. No, no one's really no one's figured out that formula. Um, they just they just haven't they haven't figured out how to broadcast esports to an audience that doesn't already know the game. Yep. So. I, I will say I, I was actually pretty impressed at BlizzCon a few years ago where I saw the the Overwatch World Cup. Overwatch would, got the closest, yeah. Yeah, they had like these like really snappy like introductions of of a map and what is going to happen on that map. And then the shoutcasters were like contextualizing every yeah. split second decision in a really smart way. And even though I wasn't like a huge Overwatch guy, I, I found it really fun. So, yeah. you know, they're, that was pretty close. Yeah, it's, it's, again, the, I guess the same dynamic uh, that we were talking about at the beginning with the prevalence of, again, another incredibly loud plane. I think there's a helicopter circling. Anyway, I guess this is this is the new truck. We don't have Bruce truck anymore. Now Yay! We just, we just no have, more like, truck. South Bay Did helicopter. you delete the emote? Did you delete the emote, Bruce? Oh, no, I didn't delete it. It's still there. Let's see that truck you just guys, for all time's sake, huh? Yeah, you could put the, you could put the truck emote in Lawrence's chat if you want to for the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I need to make a helicopter. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, you guys have identified it is that every every broadcast show like needs to get the broadest possible audience. So it's like we'll just put a little bit of that and a little bit of that and a little bit of that. So we get the Counter Strike guys, we get the Overwatch guys, we get the Dota guys, we get them all in here, and they're all watching our show. The problem. Oh, look at all those trucks. That's beautiful. I know. <laughs> uh, the problem is like all of those people have much better and more targeted and faster sources for all the information they could get in this roundup show yeah. and they already got it five days ago so why would they go out of their way to a place they don't watch content to watch a roundup show that tells them what they already know and it, it yeah kind of like kind of like bruce said it has to or uh, kind of like bruce uh, had meant it has to give them something they don't have already which is where personality comes in uh Always. We, yeah we would see this all the are time. you hold the phone Lawrence, are you saying that gamers don't have personality? <laughs> you just said they need something that they don't have. Uh oh. Which is personality. Uh oh. I mean, are we gonna cancel Lawrence, everyone? <laughs> are you trying to get them to cancel? Don't get them to cancel Lawrence. I'm just. I'm trying Lawrence? to get the heat off me after the whole podcast. You guys really be oh. coming at me. <laughs> well, we have. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Kraken's making mean, good. Uh, uh, this is podcast lore. A long time ago, I challenged Kraken to cancel somebody, and he refused because he's a nice guy. 
That's but right. He's, I'm redeeming he's making it now. good it's on you. that. Yeah. He's being a good friend <laughs> by <laughs> He's being a good friend by playing along with a bit that I thrust on him without any warning. No, no bit. Oh. Uh, never mind. Real, he's actually real hurt to, feelings. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Kraken. I'm sorry that you thought we were coming after you, buddy. That's okay. I I've made my peace with the what happened with the frog many years ago. Did your um, frog have a name, by the way? No. No, he didn't have a name. Okay. But then so again, I named have... my I named my turtle Turtle. So like, ah, uh, so it's just frog and turtle. Yep. The two best friends. They they played together actually. They, I had them both at the same time, so I would. I'm bring sure them. they did. Yeah. Yeah. That's a uh, wow. You really you had a whole uh, call of the wild thing going on in your backyard there. Yep. And the worms. Uh, that's about it. Did you else. did you live in a house in the mud? Uh no, we just had a nice backyard for a few years and then we moved. So was it I, nice? Was it nice? It sounds yeah. like it was a bunch of mud. Uh, you can find mud anywhere, Bruce. <laughs> I, I, I know you've lived in L.A. a long time, but, you know, <laughs> when you mix dirt with water, you get mud. And guess what? what? There's a lot of dirt in the world. <laughs> I'm, I, you know what, chat? I'm still going after Kraken, and I don't mean to. I'm sorry. It's just I don't an mean easy to target. After. All right, it's I just, see how it Well, is. he's talking about frogs, and it's, that, it's pretty easy to talk about baby Kraken playing with frogs. Kraken is an emotional sock monkey, unfortunately. It's not your fault. That's what just does that how things mean? turned out. <laughs> I don't actually know what that means. Yeah, what does that mean? Is sock uh, monkey like? Do you punch sock monkeys or do you just hug them? I think I think it's a little bit of both. Which is is I guess I guess to be frank, I'm not entirely sure what that means either. It just felt right to say. When, <laughs> when I see a sock monkey, it's something that's that's like it's it's cute and fuzzy, and you don't wish it any harm, but you do end up grabbing it by the leg and slinging it into the wall anyway. Mm, um, I see. And you don't want to hurt it, but you just have to do. You have to do something. Like you have to abuse it somehow. It's call of the void, I guess. That seems unhealthy. It does seem unhealthy. I'm not the one who murdered agree. a frog when I was a kid, so I don't know, man. Oh, <laughs> sorry. That was actually probably a little too cutting. My bad. That was at a left field. I murdered a completely for. different kind of animal. So I got, I got, I got a, a what, skeleton a of human? a bird in my closet. No, yeah, what did you kill? I was a bird. Um, Wait, did did you actually kill the bird, or what happened? Uh, it it died, um, probably because uh, I turned it into a pet, even though it very much was not a pet. We found mm. like an injured parakeet outside, um, and then I I sort of took after it for a while. But I think I left my blinds mm. open one day, and I think it just ran full on into the window. Because when I walked <laughs> in, it was dead on the floor and a little like a teeny little pool of blood on the carpet. Uh, oh, it slammed into the window and killed itself? I can only assume. Uh, and then I buried it in the front yard. I was crying then, Ooh. too, because I felt I felt specifically like it was like I was a bad I was a bad bird caretaker. Also, that bird was a demon. Um, so it was a weird mix <laughs> of uh, I did not feel so good. You did a service. I, did, yeah. I didn't feel good that it was gone out of my life, but it would basically like it shit everywhere. You know, as a bird, I didn't really hold that against it. Um, but. It would also, like, it would squawk really loud and, like, the per a particular frequency that would just, like, rattle my brain. And then, once, once we had re achieved a certain level of familiarity, it would, like, <laughs> fly onto my desk and bite me and then fly away and then start squawking, which sounded particularly like human laughter. Just the worst kind <laughs> of human laughter, so. You got so bullied by this bird. <laughs> It was mocking you a little what, bit. What it was doing. Yeah, and I guess I guess truly what it is is uh, you're naming things that birds do, uh, sort of. Yeah, I mean, I was a, I was like 14. You know, I was not an ornithologist. Uh, it this sounds like, like you didn't want a bird, and then you got a bird, and then you, yeah, no, you wished your bird would no. die, and then it did die. That's that's where the guilt comes from. Is that I had I had a fair amount of umbrage towards this bird for basically providing me zero emotional. Uh, satisfaction for keeping it alive and nourish, nourishing it back to health. In fact, it tormented me nonstop. Um, yeah, so, I didn't give a fuck. Yeah, it hates you. So that 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 I did feel some resentment towards it, and then it died. And then I felt like maybe subconsciously I wanted it to happen. I certainly did not, you know, that day take every precaution in making sure that that bird would not ram itself to death on a window. Also, it but very clearly wanted to go outside. Back to its habitat, <laughs> which I was preventing it from doing. So, uh, you know, that's that's all kinds of on me, I think. Yeah, 
You killed it. I don't. I don't know if, if this gets us closer or further away from each other, Kraken. Emotional. Well, uh, you guys. You guys. Yeah. You guys both killed animals uh, inadvertently. I, I. I would say that's like a involuntary manslaughter charge. But it's not, it's, isn't the definition of manslaughter slaughtering man? Wouldn't it be? I mean, involuntary. But it's involuntary, meaning you. Didn't oh, okay. Mean Have to. you ever fucking like? done roadkill you know run over something when when you're driving i have like, once i hit a cat yeah there you go there you go i hit a cat that's I didn't worse look. i immediately pulled over because by the way it was on a fr- the cat was on a fucking freeway on ramp oh the worst possible place for a cat to be because i if it's on a road i'm steering it like i don't want to hit it i'm steering around it right it doesn't matter if it's a cat or dog or whatever i'm going around it but there was no stopping getting on the 405 at like 7 p.m. and a cat runs out straight in front of me and I got, I mean, you got to plow right through it at that point. You just got to go all the way through and hopefully you kill it. Hopefully it dies a fast death because if you if you hit it the wrong way and then it just lays there for a while. So I pulled uh, over. I pulled over to see if I had, to see if I'd hit it because then I was going to try and put it out of its misery if it was like laying there hurt. But it made it off the road. <laughs> so it wasn't there anymore. So that cat may have gone on to live a completely full uh, life. Wait, so you know you hit it. I know I hit it. And it limped away, and you're like, huh? I mean, I, that's what I... It was a what freeway was on-ramp. I could stop there. Like, yeah. Yeah, hunted what, down. Like, Bruce, like, puts two fingers in a little dab of blood, sniffs it, and then, like, crouches down on all fours, and he's away. <laughs> I, he probably sent it flying somewhere. I mean, I probably did. You're probably right. I think I knocked it, like, senseless in oh, the Oh, you bushes. meet Joe Blacked it? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I did. Got I felt, I felt, I, I felt horrible. I'm like, like, it's like I said, it's one of those things where I've, I've always steered out of the way to make sure I don't hit anything in the road because I don't want to do that. But I felt terrible. There's nothing I could do. I didn't even see it. Like I saw a flash of black, and then boom! Like my car went boom, like a speed bump, and I was like, and I pulled over and felt terrible. But that was it. You know, sometimes it's just the way you got. You know what, Kraken? Lawrence, you guys may just walk out onto the street one day and just get hit by a car. And that almost happened. It. Yeah. I I came very close to death one day in L.A. Uh, with that exact same thing happening. Um, I I had, the you know, it was it was a, a walk sign. I was walking across the street. It was 3 a.m., you know, and we were in a busy intersection during the day. At night, it was empty. And this car comes out of fucking nowhere and whips around the corner without checking. And mm-hmm. I literally had to leap backwards or I would have gotten knocked, knocked completely. Jeez, see, it, so. see, you could have been that cat. You could have been the cat. And it's just one of those things we get every day. We got to go, boy, thank God I'm not that cat on the 405 <sighs> on ramp. Jeez. Yeah. Some days you're the Bruce, fine. some days you're the cat. Yes. <laughs> hopefully uh, you're never the cat on the 405 on ramp. That hopefully that is never a thing that you are. You don't ever want to be there. Well, it's good to hear that we've all involuntarily killed animal at some point, and we can all <laughs> live with that guilt together. Um, <laughs> I see a lot of people in chat acting like we're some sort of monsters. Okay, yeah. look at your you all in your on your high pedestals. I bet you've all done some things you're ashamed of, and you didn't mean to necessarily. But you know, that just that makes us human, right? We we learn. We grow and we learn. And I have not harmed a single animal, except, I guess, bugs, you know, since that point. Oh, and uh, all the meat I eat, I guess. That too. Autumn says that bugs are not animals. Autumn says that bugs are aliens. So oh. we're, allowed, we're allowed to kill them. I, I often let bugs out of my house if I catch them. Well, that's good. I let, I let the, if they're daddy long legs, I let them live in the corners because they're good spiders. They, they kill other spiders. That's what I, mean, I do. But, but other spiders kill other insects. Yeah. They do. It's a no, delicate yeah, they, balance. They do. It's, it's a delicate balance. So, like, if they're in places in the house that, like, they should be, meaning, like, they're in the corner on the ceiling or whatever, like, they're just, like, hanging out over there, we're good. Totally fine. But if one's crawling through my bed, like, I got to kill it. Like, mm. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not allowing this thing to, to make a home in, my, in the place that I sleep. Um, or, like, in the toilet or something. But if it's, like, hey... If it's just a spider and it's hanging out in the corner of my room, it's got a little spider web up there. Hey, no big deal. He's just, he's doing work. He's just trying to live just like I am. Counterpart or counterpoint, you will never get a uh, proportionate strength of a spider if you kill all the spiders around you. What if Peter Parker slapped that spider? I guess he did, Good actually. Point. He killed it as soon as it bit him. He, he um, killed it right afterward, yeah. Yeah, never mind. Um, 
<laughs> I mean, a poor segue though. Are you guys are you guys heated at all about Spider Man being exclusive to PS4? Oh, uh, a PS4 Marvel Avenger game. Yeah, yeah I figured I, it'd be deep shrugs all around. It's that's kind of what it is. So. Is it people are upset because he's in the Avengers game and that's is that what's only for PS4 there? only coming in 2021? It's it's because of Sony and the movie rights transfer. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, it, it makes total sense to me. But I mean, uh, so Spider Man is only in the uh, the PS4 version or PS5 version, I guess, whatever of the Avengers. Is four that correct? And, yeah, four and five, I think. Yeah. So I guess my question for that is like, is he just not an integral part of the story then? Because developers, I sure couldn't have made him. You right. know, a main character in the you know the PS4 version and not the Xbox version, right? Uh, it's coming after launch, so the game ships with a story mode. Oh, it's like a DLC thing. Maybe? I think so. Yeah, because uh, the game comes out this year. Spider Man's coming. Or out do they like one. do they like green screen him into every uh, every every cutscene of like, <laughs> hey guys, I'm also here. Let's go and like. <laughs> that's how I would do it. Well, they they may pause them all so they they yeah. do their lines and then they all freeze and the spider-man goes yeah guys let's go he, <laughs> and then he whips away walks onto <laughs> camera out of perspective with everyone he's like way too big or small standing in like <laughs> yeah. the middle of the screen i can't wait to go on an adventure with everybody thwip thwip and then he uh, uh oh, yeah he, he just like he like like slings in and out of every shot and then it just continues as it was meant to be I know, I know. <laughs> um i can we just educate everybody and be like hey exclusivity is okay because like they probably helped pay for the game. They probably helped make it. Is, is that yeah? Is that something? Is that does that not count for everything, Lawrence? I I don't know what you think. I mean, I I'm bummed. I like Spider Man, and I'm gonna play it on PC. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That said, it's uh, I it's it's a uh, I don't know. I I feel like it's okay to say what you want, and I feel like that's a that's a kind of a bummer of a move. Uh, yeah, people reference yeah, Soul Calibur two, but Soul Calibur two had an exclusive character for every platform. This is just one character for one platform, and no one else gets to play that character. Uh, hmm. And also, the game is going to be cross-platform, which feels a little raunchy too. So, like, if you're on Xbox or or PC, you'll get, I presumably, you'll get to see other people run around as Spider-Man, but you won't get to play that character. Ooh. Um, <laughs> so, Sorry, don't mind me. <laughs> Craig, is, Craig is rubbing it in. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, th this this is kind of a this is kind of a fa or like a world of gaming crack in that it seems like you really don't care much. About I don't. The, like, I don't care much about releases. it all, but I yeah. I love cheering on the sides to see them, you know, butt heads more because that's fun. <laughs> that is that is where all the controversy is most of the time, right? It's like it's only the big. Oh, I guess it makes sense, you know, the biggest budget, highest profile games get the most following, and then when anything happens, and that's when people get really bent out of sorts. So, yeah, I I, I feel like have we ever. Has anything been truly platform exclusive forever? Uh, there's Halo. probably a few examples, but <laughs> Halo. Yeah. Halo's on PC. That's that's Microsoft. Oh. That's Microsoft. But I mean, like, oh. no, but, uh, I mean, like, I guess I mean, like, <laughs> add-on content or DLC or something like that. Uh, nope. hmm. God of War has been, I think, exclusive to all Sony Playstations, right? Yeah, I, full games are exclusive. I'm just trying to think, like, add-on content. Feels oh, okay. like eventually it goes multi-platform. It's just like people buy exclusivity windows, and during that window, you're obviously not allowed to announce that it's coming to anything else because that's the whole goddamn point of the exclusivity window. So part yeah. of me feels like that character, that data, that content will come to other platforms eventually. They're just not allowed to say it right now. Yeah, now, I mean, you guys are just list. Sorry, chat's listing the biggest, most obvious stuff. Yeah, I know, like Mario Uncharted. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I just meant more like like DLC and. Uh, and add-on right. content that is platform exclusive. They, I think COD normally does that with PS4. Uh, like they'll do like specific skins or a map or whatever, but I don't think it like lasted very yeah. long or, it, it, you know, maybe it'll last for like six months and then and then it'll go all platforms. Yeah, well, I, I think the closest you're gonna get is skins, right? Some Destiny sort of like, 1 had you know. some stuff. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess there's that, that Spec Ops mode in Modern Warfare that was only on PlayStation. I don't think that ever went anywhere else. Uh, Mm. Yeah, Destiny Two. I got one. Hmm? The the earbuds in TF Two as a hat that you would only get if you had if you played on the Mac. I had the white earbuds. Yep. And I I felt like a sucker because somebody just like, hey, can I have those? And I remember at the time being like, I don't care. And I gave them away, but apparently they're oh, like worth no. a good amount of money. 
Yeah, I sold I sold mine for cheap too back when I didn't realize. You could oh yeah, you could sell them. I never I had them. Fuck, I didn't I never sold them. You think I'd go back and sell them right now? Hell yeah, bro. That's 40 bucks in your pocket maybe. $40, really? Possible. I, I don't know how the economy is now. There was a whole crash where they figured out how to get uh there actually this was a funny story. I remember on Twitter it it popped up the TF2 economy has crashed after this many years. And it was because <laughs> there was like a stack overflow error in like oh. the one of the uh one of the uh the you know like the crates you would open to get uh yeah. to yeah, get yeah. hats. Well, there was a, a specific series of crate that you were guaranteed to always get an unusual hat, which was the most expensive thing. Mm -hmm. And once that was like, you know, whenever that happened, basically everyone got unusual hats, you know, immediately. Right. And the economy just went just all over oh, the place. How much no. is it? 16 bucks now? I mean, that that well, was the, the momentary high in like the middle of July. Now it's averaging around like eight, seven, eight dollars. Can you, can you go back years and see how that's, much it used to be at? That's like okay. one dinner. That's like one dinner. And, uh, I can eat dinner for eight bucks. Wait, lifetime. Eh? Forty two dollars. I told you, man. Forty bucks. Why does lifetime oh. only go back to September? That's weird. Well, oh weird. September what? Oh yeah, you're right. September. Oh, is that when the crash 20, happened? No, that, that's September twenty September tw uh, twenty seventeen oh, okay. is what it is. Oh, is that what? But it? That's still that's still way later. No, wait, than no, it's when not. When people were selling stuff. Yeah, that graph is wrong. What the fuck? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know either. Come either on, way, I'm Val. rich. Yeah. <laughs> Either, I am rich. I'm going to go sell those right now. Who wants to buy my earbuds? I'll buy your real life earbuds. No. Okay. They have to be in Team Fortress 2. There's one guy who has like 12 listings for earbuds. Man, Steam is so weird. Yeah. Uh, Some people make actual, like, you know, just money off that, right? Steam items. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Lawrence, I think we made it to the end, huh? I think we did. Yeah. We talk, did it. Why did you not? Well, Kraken, we made it to the end. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Kraken, we made it to the end because Lawrence is Lawrence is running the thing. Whatever, he, dude. Whatever. He knew that he knew that I needed to use the bathroom, and he's he's giving me the go ahead. So, whatever, dude. <laughs> whatever, bro. <laughs> uh, I've been I bizarrely in the last week. I think I've heard no less than four times that real gamers piss their pants. Uh, so that's your talk to the internet challenge for this week. You got a game so hard that you pee yourself. Do it. Do I it. Do not endorse do this. Send us pictures of uh, the 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 leakage on your pants. God, no, guys, they they're gonna do this. No, they're not. I'm not. Well, they, no. All right, I'm kidding. Don't do that. That's disgusting. Don't send me pictures of your urine. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys for listening to Talk to the Internet. I'm sorry, NordVPN. Thank you for sponsoring this <laughs> podcast. I I promise the next one will be better. <laughs> There's, there's no way for it not to be. Uh, <laughs> goodbye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Bye, everyone. <laughs>